So I've talked about this tool a number of times in other videos, but I've never actually done a full tutorial on it. We're looking at the Shape Builder tool. Welcome back designers, my name is Mike Pickett. I'm a logo and vector designer with nearly 20 years in the design industry. I do a lot of other stuff other than logos and vector, but that's what I've niched down into in 2020. So if you're new to the channel and you're actually picking something up through these videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. I upload new design tutorials to the channel every Monday and Thursday. Right now I'm doing a lot of Illustrator type stuff, but in the near future, I'm actually going to expand over into some Photoshop tutorials, as well as some InDesign and a few other little things that I've got planned. If you learned something, don't forget to hit thumbs up as well. Now the Shape Builder is more than just taking two shapes and dragging your mouse across them to join them together. You've got gap options, you've got different ways that you can actually drag your mouse so you can do either a free form or a straight line. And I'll show you those different options in this tutorial. All right, enough of the talk. Let's go over into Illustrator and I'll show you how this all works. All right, designers, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator again, and I went ahead and just set up some circles so I can show you how the Shape Builder works. It's a pretty simple tool to work with, but there's a few different options that you should be aware of. The basics of it, I want to highlight my shape. Now, I don't need to do this as a first step, but it helps if I were to miss this step and just click on the Shape Builder tool, I'm going to get this little icon here on my pointer that tells me that I don't have anything selected. If that's the case, I can hold down Command on my Mac, Control on a PC, and highlight the shape that I want to work with. You'll then see that I'm back to a black cursor with a little plus sign. This is my merge mode inside of the Shape Builder. So with merge mode, it's exactly how it sounds. I can merge different shapes together, including white space. And you'll see when I hover over these shapes, I get that kind of grayed out look. That's the current shape that I'm on. And if I just drag a line through all of those, I then get one simple shape. Now, if I want to get rid of a shape, I can do the same method, but using the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. And you'll see that the little cursor turns to a minus sign instead of a plus sign. So I'm again, I'm going to click once, and it's removed that shape from the center. Now working with paths is almost the same thing. I'm just going to hold down my command and highlight this shape that we can work with now. So I'm still in Shape Builder. You can tell because I've got the highlight on the icon. And as I hover over this, you see that we've got shapes, which this is a fill. This is a fill, but I can also highlight over top of just a stroke. Now, the plus sign isn't going to help you here. Where you'll really notice it is if I hold down the Alt key. And you'll see that my strokes then turn to that red line. And that's the line that I'm actually going to be removing at this point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of a few different lines here. So I'm just going to drag right straight through here. And that's gotten rid of those strokes. And then what I can do is let's remove this one. And we're going to have that wrap around and I'm going to remove this one. Almost Adobe-esque with the icon that we've got here now. All right, so let's create a couple of issues here. So the first issue I'm going to start with, let me just grab my pen tool. I'm going to grab and put an anchor point there and I'm going to delete it. And if I go Command Y, you'll see that that is now an open path. So an open path with the Shape Builder, it's not going to recognize it. So I'm going to go again, Shift M. Let me just grab around this whole shape. If you notice when I go here, I get that little gray mark. And when I come over here, because of this open path, it doesn't recognize this shape anymore. There's one simple method to fix that. If I double click on the icon, you're going to get your Shape Builder tool options. And if we click here down in options, consider open filled path as closed. That's going to correct that problem for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll see now we can actually use that. Now, one thing to pay attention to here if you're using this, if I then go in and click on that, it's now closed that path. But if you see, let me zoom in a little bit. Well, it's just connected them straight together. And we can see that again if we go Command Y, get into our outline mode. You'll see it just did a straight line between those two points. So you'd have to come in and do a little bit of cleanup there with your pen or with your direct selection tool. But just to pay attention to that, that if you are keeping that option selected in the options to consider this as a closed path, you might have some cleanup to do. So let's come back out and we're just going to double click on that icon again to get our path options or our Shape Builder tool options back up. Because we also have this here, which is gap detection. So right now it's turned off. Let's go down to our bottom path. So we've got this shape here, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to grab this one this time, and I'm going to grab my pen tool again. I'm going to put an anchor point right here, and then I'm going to delete this one. You'll see that we've got a little bit of a gap there now. So just in between here and this line, so if I grab this whole shape, go back to my 
shape builder tool again well inside of here i get that grayed out but here i don't and that's because there's this gap in between so once again we can fix that with the options i can go gap detection turned on we have a few different options we can go small which is three points medium which is six points large is 12 and then we can also go custom where we can type in our own well i'm going to leave it at medium and this is normally where i have my gap detection on if we click ok and i come back out well that's not enough so this gap is too big for medium. So let's double click again. And if we go up to large and hit OK, still not enough. So we'd actually have to use a custom one on this. So in this case, I would actually fix this. If I were having this problem, I was coming in and actually hovering over this and seeing that that wasn't right. That gap is too big on large. This is why I keep it on medium because any, any medium gaps, I'll allow the tool to just kind of fill them in on its own. But if it's over a medium gap, I don't want to do that. I want to come in and actually fix that myself. So our last couple of options we've got, if you notice here in merge mode, clicking stroke splits the path. So what that's going to do is now that we're in merge mode right now, if I come down here and I actually, if you see as I hover over this, the red line tells me where that path is and where it's going to split it. So anywhere that there isn't a red line right now, if I click, that's going to now break into a separate path for me. So for example, if I click this one and then come out, I'm just going to grab my direct selection or my selection tool and I can drag that out. So now what I can do is come in and actually I can combine these two together to have that fold up and work through. And then I could do something else here. Now this is almost like our divide tool on the pathfinder where it splits everything out, but you can actually pick and choose which sections you want to pull out. Because if you notice when I click on this, I still get that main path. It stopped here before but I'm still getting all of this. So I can pick and choose with that option on. Let's look at our last couple of options here and we'll move through. Now, right now, highlight, we can highlight fill or highlight stroke when editable. These two I usually leave on. I don't get rid of either of them. You can uncheck one or the other if you didn't want to see them. So if you only wanted to work on fills, you could come in and remove the highlight stroke when editable and it'll just allow you to work on fills. The other option, straight line or freeform. I leave it on freeform all the time. If we go straight line, I'll hit OK. Well, I can't kind of click through. You'll see that I get this rubber band effect where it's just a straight line and I can't go free form. So if I wanted to actually come in here and do this and actually run through this path, all right, or even up here, I'll give you an example. Let's just grab this one. Now, if I wanted to run kind of through this corner, I can't do it. I have to come through and then around, right? And I, it's always a straight line. Not a problem here because we've got that gap or we got that spacing, but I like the free form because that way I can come in here and I can just run right around that corner. It just works like a pencil tool or like a, you know, like your brush or your pencil tool. Lastly, we have pick color from, you can either go color swatches or you can go artwork. Now, because we're all gray here, I've got this on color swatches because the nice thing about this is what I can do is I can actually come up here. I can select a different color swatch so I can go blue. Now you need to have it selected, but then if I click on this, it's going to make it that blue color. So we can change it again, go to pink and click on this. It makes it that pink color. So the key to this though, is that you need to have this selected and be in the shape builder tool. Otherwise that's not going to do anything or it's going to change the color, right? So if I go here, and try to pick a color first for what I want to do with my shape builder. Well, of course, it's going to change the whole shape to that orange. So let me just back up here. I've got my shape selected, shift M, and then I can come in and select the blue and click through and make whatever pieces blue that I want to be blue. Cursor swatch preview. If we hit OK, what that does is gives you that little block up on top of your cursor. And from there, you can use your arrow keys up and down, goes up and down your swatches, left and right, goes left to right through your swatches. So if you think about it, we come over here, you'll see that our top line starts with that black, the red, the yellow, and then works our way down to our gray scales. That's the same type of deal here. As I'm going up and down, I'm getting different areas. And then if I go left to right, I go lighter gray scale. There's my different palette. So it's all of your various options they've got available right here in your palette. All right, designers, so that's the Shape Builder tool. Pretty easy to use. Now, if you really wanna get some real world practice with this, this video right here is going to allow you to download a file and follow along as I make it. And I use the Shape Builder tool in that video. All right, so that's it for this one, designers. I hope you pick something up. I gotta get back to work. Now get out there and design something and I'll see you in the next video. I have to do that one like five times just to get it right. And some days I just, ugh.
Eh, what are you going to do? 